Continuing now with our lead story, analyzing last night's debate. Joining us from Washington, Charles Krauthammer. So where am I going wrong, Charles? Well, you're mostly right, which in and of itself is a surprise. Uh, you know, and actually his high point was something that you didn't mention, but his reference to Lincoln, that was essentially a play on the Lloyd Benson line. That was essentially him saying, I knew Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln was a friend of mine and you are not a Blinken. I thought that was extremely effective, and it appeared spontaneous. Yeah, it was. But his, his low point was something that you seemed to brush off as something that would only concern the left. When you look at your opponent, and you threaten to put your opponent in jail, you have gone way over the line of political decency in this country. That's not Hitler, Stalin. That's Banana Republic. All right, I disagree. That's what happens in. But let me just. All right. I've got a thought. Go I'm going to finish it. Go ahead. And that is, we have had 250 years of miraculous transfer of power, with done peacefully and consensually. The one thing we don't do is to put people in jail or to execute them. In other countries, your life can be on the line in elections. And we had a long history where you don't even talk about that. The breach of that etiquette of talking about, I'm going to personally order a special prosecutor. Incidentally, the law wouldn't even allow that. But nonetheless, and then you would end up in jail as if he's prejudging it, is something that should never be done and is another example of Trump lowering the level of our discourse. Right, I disagree um, because, number one, um, he has to play to a certain voter, all right, who does believe that Mrs. Clinton got away with a national security violation that no one else would have gotten away with. And millions and millions of those voters out there. So, yeah, you're right. He can't put anybody in jail if he's president. You can't just sign executive orders when he's incarcerated. But certainly he would have the power to his Justice Department would to reopen an investigation that the government deemed to be not credible. He does have the power to do that. And I wasn't offended by that so much in the sense that I knew it was a quip off the, off the top of his head, which, you know, and I think it helped him. I, I really believe that yeah, helped but you him. You always defend Trump by saying he said X. Oh, it perhaps was not the right thing to do. Maybe it was constitutional. Well, oh, you didn't believe he literally indecent. was going to put him in jail, but he was, do you? But he was appealing and it works for him. Works for him is different from saying it's the right thing to do. Charles. The low point of the convention was the crowd saying, lock her up. Okay. That's not we what want people civility, are and, and we on this program, as you well know, have stayed out of the swamp. But you can't tell me that you thought that Donald Trump was saying, if I'm elected, I'm going to incarcerate this woman like I would do in an inquisition. He was making a point that there would be a special prosecutor. The email thing would be reopened because, again, many, many millions of Americans feel that this was a, the fix was in, that another president, Barack Obama, made sure that it wasn't the, an honest investigation did not take place. So I hope we have a, a, a tradition in this country of honest investigations. And that's how I took it. Look, one of the, the presidents that we retroactively revere is Gerald Ford in a situation with Nixon, who was clearly guilty, but he understood it would heal the country and that in America, you don't put ex-presidents in jail. It cost him the presidency, which makes it a profile in courage. But here we could all agree there was obviously way overstepping the line. He would have been impeached and all that. And he probably would have been convicted. But there's a but difference. But it's understood in this country that you don't put political losers in jail. It's a difference. It's more than political losers. In the Watergate situation, the system worked. All right. The investigation led to wrongdoing on the part of Richard Milhouse Nixon. All right. Now, what Ford did, and I support that as a historian, you're absolutely right. He said it doesn't get us any further as a nation to punish this man. So I'm going to pardon him. But this is different because this investigation, and there's a lot of evidence to point to this, was a fraud. It was a fraud because of politics. So if Trump's going to go in and say, I want an honest investigation, if I'm elected, I'm going to see it happens, I don't think that's a cheap shot thing. It's worse than a cheap shot thing. And you're probably right that it works with his base. And in one sense, you could say, yes, this is allowing the justice to go ahead. But the idea that you threaten your opponent 
with jail, and he used the word jail, I didn't, um, it, to me is a breach of the decency of our system where we don't do that, All right. even where it might be warranted, as in the Nixon case. I, I will see that there are two sides to this story, and, I, and I'm glad we had this debate because you'll see this nowhere else on television. Right. 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 You will never see it. But I'm going to stick to my guns. I do not believe that was an honest investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails. And as an American citizen, I do not want the highest levels of our government, the president, the attorney general, and the FBI, to be in the tank on an investigation of this import. And if I was president, I'd do the exact thing. Last word. Look, I understand the will to do that. I simply believe that there are certain limits to political discourse and to what you do to your opponent. And in this case, it was something that you have, have you ever heard a presidential candidate ever threatening another with that kind of legal act. And he's done it with others. He said to the guy, owner of the Chicago White Sox, who, who put the money Cubs. in the campaign against him, he said he's got business things. I, he better watch out if I'm president. No, I, I don't like the unique. threats either. That, that's not unique to him. That's right. what he's doing. And that's a misuse of the powers of the presidency. All right, Charles Gratt, everyone.